Welcome to Jurgen's Journeys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hello friends, I'm doing a series called Tips for Trips. And right now I'm focusing on preparations that I like to make before I crank up my rig to leave on a trip. The first thing I do is get my tow vehicle ready. And uh, you can check out how I do that on the video link that I put up here. Now this video today, I will talk about preparing your RV before leaving on a trip. Now, if you're new at RV camping, you'll want to think about some of these tips that I'm going to share. Uh, these tips might save you a lot of time and trouble, and some could even save your life. No kidding. Some of these preparations can be lifesavers. Uh, but be that as it may, I can almost guarantee you that uh, you're going to like at least one or two of these tips if you follow along on Jurgen's Tips for Trips. So let's get started on some tips for preparing your RV to travel. Tip number one. Uh, the first tip is exactly the same as for your tow vehicle. Always make sure that your tire pressure is correct and uh, that it's correct for your load. You have to know how much you're carrying and for your tires. Uh, so make sure you know what you're riding on and how it should be pressurized. Don't risk your life on an old or worn out or underrated tire. Never exceed the recommended load rating because this can get you in a big trouble. It can cause you problems. You might be fined in certain states, some situations, or you could even be killed. Worst case scenario, if you got in a wreck. Uh, but at any rate, a blowout on your rig can cause major damage to your camper because usually the wheel wells on the camper are very flimsy and often they're located under some very expensive systems like a slide or a wiring harness or some other kind of hard repair component. Now there's no shortage of testimonies to that fact on YouTube by those who have had blowouts. My friends Brad and Diana with a channel called It's About Time Now recently experienced this very thing. And here's a link to their video on that experience. Uh, check them out. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to them. Uh, they're good folks. And uh, leave them a comment. Tell them that Jurgen sent you. See if you don't like their, their channel. I really enjoy them, so I think you will too. So tip number one is check to be sure that your tires are in top shape and that they're correctly pressurized. Tip number two. You need to make sure that your wheel bearings are properly greased. Now, today's Dexter Easy Lube axles make it kind of easy. They say you can just shoot uh, some grease in there, 5,000 miles or so, and um, that's all you need to do. Now, some mechanics don't agree with that. They say you've got to pull the hub, clean the bearings, repack them, and uh, do all that work, uh, you know, every 12,000 miles or so. I, whatever your manufacturer recommends for your axles. Um, but I think it depends on where you travel. Uh, you know, if you're traveling at, at the coast, a lot of salty, sandy uh, roads, or if you travel in the, in the desert where everything's so dusty and you get a lot more dirt on the road, you may need to be more careful about that. I, I really can't say, you know, for sure, talk to your mechanic, use your own judgment, but be that as it may. Um, taking off that hub leads me to uh, tip number three. If you pull off that drum, that brake drum, the, the uh, hub, uh, you can see the brake pads. And tip number three is physically check your brake shoes as recommended. Uh, especially if you've never owned this rig before, if it's not a new rig, you, you may want to make sure that it's got good shoes on it uh, so that you have good trailer brakes. I mean, this is one of those life and death tips. If you inspect the uh, brake pads and drums, you'll also see the electric magnet and the wires that control the brakes. Uh, so get a good, reliable mechanic to do that for you if it's not something you feel you can do. 
Uh, you don't have to take it to an RV dealership and stand in line uh, to get your brakes serviced. Any good mechanic ought to be able to do that for you. So, speaking of electric brakes, tip number four is check your electrical system. Now, this includes your house battery. It uh, may not hold a charge anymore if it's been discharged more than 50%. Now, some campers don't have good batteries to begin with. Some campers, um, you know, may sit over the winter without ever being charged. And that let the battery run down, and if a battery goes down to zero, well, you pretty much ruin that battery and need to replace it. Now, you may think that it's not too important uh, to replace the battery, especially if you plan to camp in a park uh, with hookups. Say, what do I need a battery for? The thing is this that battery on your trailer is the only thing that will activate your trailer brakes if the trailer breaks loose from your tow vehicle. Uh, so always check your brakes and adjust your brake controller properly before you get underway. Nothing, not even your tires are more important than your braking system which, is, which has several uh, electrical components besides the electrical brake controller and the brakes themselves, or you, you need to think about your brake lights and make sure they're all working right. Uh, check your turn signals before you ever pull out of the driveway. Oh, and one more thing about the electrical system. Um, make sure that your cord that plugs into your tow vehicle is not too long and drags the ground. Uh, this can be a big deal if you wear through some of those wires as you're going down the road. Tip number five, the last one I'm going to give you today, uh, check your water system. Now, the water system uh, needs to be checked thoroughly before you leave home. At the beginning of the season, you know, before a long trip, just uh, make sure that uh, you put water in it, uh, pressurize the system uh, so you can check for leaks, see if the pump is still working, make sure the drain valves are closed because you've got those, uh, the fresh water drain and your system drains underneath the trailer. If you winterize it and forgot to close them, then you'll lose whatever water you put in it uh, as you're going down the road. Uh, make sure your holding tanks are clean and empty with the uh, valves tightly closed on that. Now, I usually put enough water in my fresh water tank to handle my travel needs for that day. Uh, like if I want to stop for lunch and use the bathroom or something like that, I'd like to have a little water in the tank. But unless I plan to boondock without water hookups, um, I don't fill the freshwater tank completely because it, water weighs over 8 pounds per gallon and, and on my 32 gallon tank uh, that amounts to over 250 pounds of excess weight to pull. Um, so I just put in, you know, usually less than a third of the tank for my, for my trip. Uh, depends on how far I'm going. Um, and incidentally, I keep my plumbing system and fresh water tanks sanitized by only filling it with chlorinated city water. Uh, it's not for drinking, but the chlorinated water has always kept my system pure. And over the past 30 years or more with several campers, that's worked quite well. So uh, there's going to be a test on the first five RV preparation tips next week. <laughs> and then I'll give you five more in the next video on how to prepare your RV for a long trip or at the beginning of the season. So uh, you watch for that. And don't forget to support this channel by, first of all, hitting that subscribe button. And then uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video or two thumbs down if you didn't like it. And then, uh, of course, it would be great if uh, you would share this video with your friends on your uh, various social media platforms. Uh, but by all means, leave me your tips in the comments below. Tell us what you do to prepare your RV at the beginning of each new season or for a long trip. Um, but until next time, folks, thank you so much for joining me today. May all your journeys be safe and may God bless you.